Quachit Buddhas Vashanami Vaaste. How does it go down? How do we get to make it go down? Yes. Yeah. Oh. So Putra Bhagavat Prapana. Yeah. Krishna Padantika Marga Pamsushva Acheshta Prema Vibhinna Hindariya. Translation, please tell me whether our Kura, the son of uh, Swafoka, is doing well. He is a faultless soul, surrendered unto the personality of Godhead. He once lost his mental equilibrium due to his ecstasy of transcendental love and fell down on the dust of a road, which is marked with the footprints of Krishna. Moleti kajimi dobre ili akura sinat na shvapalka. To je bezgrešna duša, udarjena na božesinata ličnost. Веднъж от трансцендентална любов той изпадна в такъв екстаз, че загуби разсъда и падна на прашния път, белязан със стъпките на Бог Кришна. Purport, when Akura came to Vrindavan in search of Krishna, he saw the footprints of the Lord on the dust of Nandagram and at once fell on them in ecstasy of transcendental love. This ecstasy is possible for a devotee who is fully absorbed in incessant thoughts of Krishna. Such a pure devotee of the Lord is naturally faultless because he is always associated with the supremely pure personality of Godhead. Constant thought of the Lord is the antiseptic method for keeping oneself free from the infectious contamination of material qualities. The pure devotee of the Lord is always in company with the Lord by thinking of him. Yet, in the particular context of time and place, the transcendental emotions take a different turn. And this breaks the mental equilibrium of the devotee. Lord Chaitanya displayed a typical example of transcendental ecstasy, as we can understand from the life of this incarnation of Godhead. Когато Акрура дошъл във Вриндаван, за да търси Кришна, в пръхта на Нанда Грам той видял следите от стъпките на Бога. И ми го паднал върху тях в пръхта, обзето от екстаза на трансценденталната любов. Подобен екстаз може да се изпита само от предан, който непрекъснато е потопен в мисли за Кришна. Такъв предан на Бога е безгрешен и чист, защото винаги общува с върховната божествена личност. Непрекъснатите мисли за Бога са като антисептично средство, което предпазва човек да не се зарази с материални качества. Когато мисли за Бога, чистия предан постоянно е редом с него. Но при определени обстоятелства, трансценденталните емоции могат да приемат други форми и да нарушат душевното равновесие на предания. Ярки пример за подобен трансцендентален екстаз е показал Бог Чайтания, както може би научим от живото описанието на тази инкарнация на Бога. Въпросите за Акрура, който е велик предан на Кришна. Uh, of course, the name Akura, Akura, Akura means cruel, so Akura means not cruel. Името значи, който не е жесток. Which means the opposite, he's very compassionate to everybody. Много състрадателен към всички. Now there's a problem because later on the gopis call Krishna very Kura, he's very cruel. Но това е проблем, защото по-късно гопите го наричат Крура или много жесток. Because Kamsa was assigned him to bring Krishna from Vrindavan to Mathura, and thus he got separated from the people of Vrindavan, so they say he's very cruel. It's not a proper name. Защото Kamsa го изпратил да доведе Кришна от Вриндаван в Матура и жителите на Вриндавана така били разделени от Кришна и за това казали името му не е подходящо. But nevertheless, he is considered to be very exalted devotee of the Lord. Но въпреки това той се счита за много възвишен предан на Бога. And these exalted devotees of the Lord are no longer doing sadhana bhakti. Тези възвишени предани не извършват sadhana bhakti. We have three types of bhakti, sadhana bhakti, bhav bhakti and prem bhakti. Има три вида бхакти, sadhana, bhava и prem. So people who are conditioned in the material world, uh, if they got faith, then they perform sadhana bhakti with the hope of attaining prema. Обословените същества в материалния свят извършват сада на бхакти практика с надежда да достигнат према. Those devotees involved with Krishna in his pastimes, they have attained that state of према. А преданите участващи в забавленията на Кришна са постигнали нивото на према. Or they may be eternally uh, nityas siddhas who have eternal prema for Krishna and they never are in a conditioned state. Или пък са вечни предвиждители на Кришна, вечно в према и никога не са били обословени. Uh, so, Uh, of course, people doing sadhana bhakti, they have get a little bit of bhakti, 
It's not full. Тези, които извършват садана, имат малко бхакти, но тя не е пълна. We may have 1% bhakti, 10% bhakti, 30% bhakti, 50% bhakti, 80% bhakti, etc. Може да има 1, 3, 10, 30, 50% бхакти и така. So the process of bhakti is to go from 0 to 100%. Процесът на бхакти е да тръгнем от 0 и да стигнем до 100%. So that sadhana bhakti goes from 0 up to maybe 95% or not that. И в садана се върви от нула до почти 95%. And then from 95 onward you have bhava. И на при 95% вече имаме бхава. And when you get 100% it's called prema. И при 100% е наречено према. So prema qualifies us for associating with Krishna in the spiritual world. Према ни прави квалифициране да общуваме с Кришна в духовния свят. So for the material we'll have to go through all these stages to get there. Но трябва да минем през всички тези етапи за да достигнем там. So in the Bhagavatam, um, in Krishna's pastimes, most of these devotees are in prema. Yeah. So there is some features which distinguish that state from our state. So one is the ecstatic symptoms which are described as Акура develop ecstatic symptoms on seeing the footprints of Krishna. Това са екстатичните симптоми, които Акура тук е проявил, виждайки стъпките на Кришна. So the symptom is not some cultivated characteristic, it's a spontaneous natural characteristic that arises from intense love. Това не е нещо култивирано, а е спонтанна проява, спонтанно качество на естествената любов. So these ecstatic symptoms are usually called sattvika bhavas. These ecstatic symptoms are usually called sattvika bhava. Which means a state of a visible state of uncontrolled body and senses and mind due to great internal disturbance. Което буквално означава видимо не владеене на ума и сетилата, което се проявява като ecstatic symptoms поради неспособност на овладение на вътрешния екстаз. But this internal service got nothing to do with our mind and our, you know, brain and body because they, they don't have material bodies. So it is uh, the internal disturbance of transcendental emotions, spiritual emotions. Така че това вътрешно нервно веси, което възниква, не е породено от вътрешните органи, материални като мозък и така нататък, защото те имат материално тяло, а от вътрешната любов. It may arise from great joy. Може да възникне от голяма радост. That is the case here. Akura sees the footprints of Krishna and he becomes very joyful, so overjoyed that he develops some symptoms. И това е случай. Тук Акура вижда стъпките на Кришна и толкова се зарадва, че проявява тези симптоми. The other cause would be great grief. Друга причина може да е голяма мъка. As when Krishna leaves Vrindavan, all the gopis faint. Когато Кришнат тръгва от Вриндаван, всички гопи изгубват съзнание. So these are symptoms which are, we can say, involuntary. Да, това са симптоми, които не са осъзнати. They're usually classes 8. И те са 8 на бъде. And so one is fainting. Един от тях е изгубване съзнание. Another is crying. Плач. Another is heavy breathing. Тежко дишане. Another is perspiration. Потене. Another is trembling of the body. Треперене на тялото. So like this we have Another is being stunned. Can't move. So these are things which we don't consciously think of, but just due to the emotions, they just happen. And these are, I said, signs of either bhava or prema. In bhava there are some symptoms, in prema there are intense symptoms. В Баба има някои от симптомите, а на према това са, те са вече много интензивни. And if you read the 10th canto of Bhagavatam, you will see that the associates are always going through these transformations. Yasoda may faint or she may cry or the gopis may faint or cry, etc. И в Баба там виждаме примери за тези симптоми, как майка Ешода може да припадне или да плаче или гопите да изгубят съзнание и да плачат. So then we could recognize the devotee even on earth who has prema by these symptoms. И така ние може да разпознаем преден, който е достигнал према, проявяващ тези симптоми.
However, people can also imitate such symptoms. Но хората могат и да имитират такива симптоми. We have very good actors. И има много добри актьори. So they can cry or they can do so many things. Но да плачат или да правят много неща. So some people can act out these symptoms of prema, and then everyone will think, oh, he's a prema bhakta, he's highest level, let's worship him. Някои хора могат да ги изиграят тези симптоми, хората да си мислят, о, това е да ми бог на према, да го обожаваме. This is possible in other countries, but India is kind of common, especially in Bengal. Не знам в други страни, но в Индия е обичайно, особено в Бенгал. So when people have these symptoms that the public who are kind of devotional, then they will start worshiping that person, oh, he's got prema. И ако някой прояви такива симптоми, обикновените хора почват да ги обожават, мислики, че са в према. Но както казах, това е просто игра. So they don't really have prema. Те нямат всъщност према. In fact, some of them may not even believe in Krishna. Всъщност някои дори не може да не вярват в Кришна. But it's convenient because through that they get worship, through worship they get money, through money they can support themselves. Но това е нещо удобно, тъй като като ги обожават хора, като дават пари, така могат да се издържат. So showing ecstatic symptoms is a sign of Prema, and they make a money from that. That's how they make their money. Така те си скарат прехраната. Показват симптоми на према и получават пари. It's also common in the kirtans in Bengal. Това също е обичало да си в киртани в Бенгал. So often they will have 24-hour kirtan, 36-hour kirtan, you know, they go day and night, day and night having kirtans, and they hire different groups of people. И така те организират някакъв киртан, 26 часа, 36 часа и наемат различни групи. These are professional kirtaners. They go from job to job, so to speak, from kirtan mela to kirtan mela, and they get hired at each place. They get the money, and then they take it home, and they support their families that way. И това са професионални музиканти, които ходят от такива събития от kirtan mela на kirtan mela, и така вземат пари и се издържат. Probably like in the modern world, they have bands, and they have, you know, the members of the band, and then they get a job one place, they go there, and they perform, they get the money, and then they get to go to another place, get the money, they come back, and they have the money, and they support themselves that way. Удобно на съвременните групи, които пътуват, си правят концерти и така печелят пари. Difference, of course, is this is supposed to be spiritual, so they're doing Hare Krishna Kirtan, <laughs> but they're professionals. Че това са мантра професионалисти, предполага да са духовни, но го правят за пари. So they're professional in the sense that, yes, they've learned all the Mridanga beats and they have wonderful ragas and tunes for their Kirtans. Професионалисти, защото са научили добре инструментите и свират всички раги. But then, of course, they also start displaying these symptoms: fainting, crying, rolling on the ground, shivering, etc. So it's more or less expected that they should do this. And then the crowd, they all get emotional. They also start crying and rolling on the ground. So uh, this, of course, is actually condemned by our acharyas. This is fake. A person who does this is pretending and he's exploiting the people for his own profit. So the real symptoms actually develop in late in the bhava and then mostly in prema. Yeah. So these are very rare levels of attainment. Uh-huh. Uh, now, uh, Nectar Devotion in there, um, Rupa Goswami describes that there's something called bhava bas, which is like a not real bhava. В нектара на преданост Рупа Госвами описва нещо наречено бхава бхаса, което означава неистинска бхава. So this will be the imitation, as I said, of these kirtaniers. That's a bhas, bhava bhas. И тази имитация, както да пример с тези kirtani, е като бхава бхас. That is completely condemned. И това е отречено, отвърлено. The other is, uh, it's not purposely or doing that, but some people, when they begin bhakti, they're quite sentimental. So then they may have some symptoms like crying or whatever. Другият случай е някои хора, които може да не са достигнали това ниво, но в началото на бакти да са сентиментални и могат да почнат да плачат. So that is not really condemned, but of course we should understand it's also not, they're not on the highest level simply because they're crying or fainting. Това не се отхвърля, но не трябва да си мислим, че понеже плачат, не са на най-високото ниво. So because of a little happiness with Krishna, then they do develop these symptoms. Mm. In any case, we can't use these symptoms as just an absolute sign or judgment for 
uh, determining who's got prema, who's not got prema. S druge domine možda ispozvim tezi vršni priznici za da usudim da li neko je dostignuo prema ili ne. Yeah, so of course Prabhupada said the real symptom of someone who's very advanced is always talking about Krishna. <laughs> and of course we can look by look at other symptoms as well. So if you look at the kirtaniers, they're doing their act, whatever. <laughs> then they finish, they go to their rooms, and then if you look at them, you'll understand they're not really on the highest level because of the activities they're doing in their room. <laughs> <laughs> they may be smoking cigarettes or whatever ever in their rooms, you know, just relaxing. <laughs> so therefore we can't take those as absolute symptoms, but if a person is constantly absorbed in the Lord and we can see that, uh, and they're always speaking nicely about the Lord and his pastimes, etc. We can say that's a symptom of great advancement. Hmm. So anyway, we see here the description of Rakura with these uh, very elevated symptoms or Satika Bhavas. Uh, so he did not see Krishna, he simply saw the footprints of Krishna. Uh, uh, so often the devotees, simply by exalted devotees, simply by seeing something related to Krishna, they will develop these ecstasies because of that strong love for Krishna. They're technically called udipanas or stimuli for love. Yeah. Uh, so if they see a footprint of Krishna, uh, they see a dark cloud that looks like Krishna's complexion, they hear a sound of the cuckoo that reminds them of Krishna's flute, then they go into ecstasy. <laughs> Now, as Prabhupada mentions in the purport, these can also interrupt your consciousness, like if you faint and then you get interrupted. Mm. So these devotees are not intentionally trying to do it, this may happen, and they may also regret it because it interrupts their service to Krishna. <laughs> so it's not something they're seeking to do or you know, they're not aspiring to have ecstatic symptoms or whatever. It just but, happens and maybe they may regret it because it's an obstacle to their service. Hmm. Uh, so that's the state of, if you, if you read the pastimes of Krishna as devotees, you'll see that's their state, constant state. Uh, but Prabhupada here also mentions about Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya is playing the role of a devotee that is in the mood of Radharani. So, also involuntarily, he also develops ecstatic symptoms. But like Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's symptoms are extraordinary. Uh, so in the spiritual world, Radharani has extraordinary ecstatic symptoms which no other person, not even the other gopis have. <laughs> uh, if she faints, the whole <laughs> universe faints. <laughs> that's the that's symptom of her <laughs> ecstatic love. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Lord Chaitanya similarly has most extraordinary uh, symptoms. He is Krishna, but he's got the mood of Radha, so in that mood of separation from Krishna, that he develops most intense symptoms. Uh, so it said when he was in the Ratha Yatra and he was, there was a kirtan and he would cry. But then the, the, the tears didn't just drop, they shot out of his mouth. 
are out of his, his eyes like се, squirt guns. You know? <laughs> when he perspired, he didn't perspire perspiration, he perspired blood. <laughs> when he fell on the ground, he fell on the ground like a, a banana tree falling over in a storm, like off on the ground. <laughs> and in the later part of the Bhagavatam is described that he would get in such ecstatic states that his joints would separate. The the bones would separate <laughs> And sometimes his limbs would kind of shrink into his body like a turtle withdrawing his limbs. These are not seen anywhere in such symptoms. And then when he come back to normal consciousness, then he would be normal again. <laughs> so that's just a sign of great, intense prema. So we should appreciate that in the exalted devotees, but at the same time we can never imitate that. Our aspiration is simply to try to serve Krishna constantly. And our sadhana for doing that is Nam Sankirtan. Though it is a simple process, it is also the most powerful process. Uh, such that it is higher than any other process of devotional service. Uh, and of course, in anything that you want in the material world and liberation you can get, but even in spiritual realm, it can give you the highest thing of all. And that is association of Krishna and Vrindavan. So, uh, it is said that if you, we have Krishna mantras, you know, we get Diksha, we do Deity worship, we have Krishna mantra. That is not even powerful enough to get you to Goloka. Only chanting Krishna's name will get you to Goloka. And there all these symptoms will naturally manifest. Okay. Hare Krishna. This is John Steinbeck. That's Grapes of Wrath? Grapes of Wrath. American author. I have a question, Maharaj. Yeah. In, in, the, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, there were these two descriptions. One is the Chaya Bhava and, uh, uh, sorry, Bhava Abhas and Chaya Bhava. Yeah, so the Chaya is what is called Pratibimba. Reflection, Pratibimba. Yeah, yeah that's the bad one. That's the Sahajiyas and, Sahaja. yeah, and the other is, and That what? is like the sentimental people. They have faith. They're not deceptive. Uh. But they start developing crying and shivering and fainting and stuff like that. But they're not on Bhava stage or Prima stage. Uh, so yeah, they're, but it, it could be genuine in the sense that he lists in a few, yeah. few things if there is a proper place, a holy place, yeah. holy time with holy yeah. people, yeah. then yeah. you can, by others, by yeah. proximity, it can come. Yeah. Yeah. So that is, yeah, there's nothing, it's not criticized, but yeah. we should understand it's also not, they're not suddenly on Bhava Sage. <laughs> it's a, a shadow of it. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking how, how do we deal in ISKCON with these ecstatic symptoms? Because in the future, or even presently, uh -huh. some of our devotees might develop yeah. these ecstatic symptoms, but you know, we are being trained. To, to, be, to be scared of them. <laughs> 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 so if, if someone might display such symptoms, maybe you would be, uh -huh. be called a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just wondering, how do we deal with if the, if the world is really developed these symptoms, ecstatic symptoms? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, that's not the only symptom of exalted love. So we have to look at the other symptoms as well and see if they're there. Mm -hmm. 
Въпросът беше как да се отнасяме към някои истински развитие симптоми. Ами, има и други принципи, които може да видим, други признаци. Да. Uh, so, uh, if one were attain the stage of Bob and Mahatma's ecstatic symptoms, then we can also determine that by other things. So there are some things mentioned in the Nectar Devotion, 13 Anubhavas, yeah? <laughs> and the nine, nine, nine qualities also of Bhava. Yeah, yeah. И в нектара на предността е обяснено, че има други симптоми, които освен признаци на екстаз се проявяват като 13-те анобави и другите симптоми. Yeah, so the Christ says he's constantly chanting the name, he's constantly absorbed in hearing the past times, he's living in the Holy Dham, so he's very absorbed in you know, everything related to Krishna. Той постоянно такъв премене е потопен в неща свързани с Кришна, слуша името на Кришна, повтаря, живее на святото място. And in that state we will see, obviously because he's so attached to Krishna, he has no material attention interests at all. И очевидно, нали, в това състояние, понеже толкова привързан към Кришна, няма никакъв материален интерес. And as we see also the nectar devotion as you develop you get rid of your kleshagni all the bad things karmas go, all the anarctas disappear and all good qualities manifest. Разбира се, както описано там, всички лоши качества и карми се изчистват и се развиват всички добри качества. So we'll have all the exalted wonderful qualities you would expect in a, you know, a very advanced person. И така че има много необикновено качество, което може да се проявят в такъв напредно. And he won't show any of the anarctas. И също няма да бъдат видими никакви анарти. Of course, they say in Baba stage, yes, there are some anartas. And if we see that anarta, we should also not criticize it. <laughs> it is like criticizing the spot on the moon. <laughs> uh, but she is very small in comparison to the exalted qualities. Yes. Hmm. So many, of course, they're very absorbed in Krishna. That we have to see that. So apart from his fainting spells or whatever, if he's always absorbed in Krishna, then we can take that. And he has wonderful qualities. Then we can take he's very exalted. Така че ако освен проявяват на екстаз, може да видим, че човек е постепенно, постоянно подопен в в Кришна и има прекрасни качества, предани качества, да че е на такова ниво. In Madhuri Kadambani, there is a description in in Abhava and Prema how they become completely. Uh, detached from everything in the material and more and more attached to Krishna. So the person would probably be on those stages where we can you know, relate those descriptions to that person. Hmm. Devotees on this higher level, they kind of deal in an awkward way with the. I no, mean, normal people. But they're perceived in an awkward way by the materialistic people. Yeah. So how, and we will try to present ourselves always as very presentable, very <laughs> socialist. How do we reconcile this seeming contradiction yeah. if you want to advance? Yeah. В Мадуре Кадамбини е обяснено, че такъв извен предан изглежда, че действа асоциално и не е възприемчиво това от обикновените хора. А ние се опитваме да изглеждаме приемливи за хората. Да, so it is a problem because such a person is not interested in convention. И това е проблем, защото такава личност не минава всяки условности. So they may do everything opposite of what we expect an exalted devotee to do. Могат да правят точно обратно това, което очакваме да се да прави един правил. They are not subject to any rules. Не са обект на правила. So therefore we do have to be very careful when we try to judge such a person. They may be a sahaja or something like that, <laughs> or they may not be. You know, we have to be very careful. So we have to be a little bit sensitive in our judgment. Yeah. So someone bumps against Babaji did not act in a very conventional manner at all. <laughs> Пример, като за такъв преден вам ще даде сбава, че изобщо не действа като обикновен човек. Or Gorky Shore also did not act in a very conventional manner. Или дори Gorky Shore да сбава, че. So, you know, but we can't criticize. Не може да ги критикуваме. So it also may need a, an exalted other, another devotee for confirmation. И също може да е необходим друг да е извисен преден, който да потвърди. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarai said, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarai is exalted devotee. <laughs> so then all the disciples go and worship him. Otherwise, they wouldn't know. 
I think he would use a smoke or hookah or something. Eh? <laughs> Maharaj, can I explain this point about uh, we can achieve Guloka only through the names of Krishna and not through the mantra because mm-hmm. the mantras they are again made from the names of Krishna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Може ли да обясни как, как така само с името на Кришна, тъй като в мантрата за обожание също има името на Кришна? Не се казва на всяка в Чайтани Шаритамита малко, но повече в Брихат Бхагавата. В Чайтани and in Riyadvagavatamrata, Gopu Kumar got his mantra from his guru, ten syllable Krishna mantra. And he did that and he got through, you know, went through Svargaloka, Brahmaloka, Shiva Loka, got at the Vaikuntha, etc. И в Гопкумар, описано в Прихат Бхагаватамрата, получава тази десет сиришкова мантра, и чрез нея той достига до Вайкунта. But uh, Narada Muni said, if you really want to attain what you want, that is Krishna in Goloka, you're going to have to do non-sankirtan. So he doesn't explain the logic, why, why, why it's different. So definitely the mantra uh, has the name of Krishna in it, so it's not different from Krishna also. But we could even say that about Om. Om is also non different from Krishna. Brahma Gai Chumash is also non different from Krishna. So why don't we chant about Om, just chant Om all day like the yogis? <laughs> so there are many mantras and things like that, also Krishna, but some are less direct, some are more direct. So almost Krishna, Brahma Gaiti is Krishna, but then we do have our 18 syllable Krishna mantra. That's more directly Krishna because we have Krishna's name in there. But then that name also is it has the other syllables there, etc. So there's conventions for chanting mantras. И понеже това име, около него има и други срички, е под формата на мантра и има вече условности или принципи, които трябва да се спазват. Then if you don't chant according to those, you know, rituals and whatever, you don't get the full effect. И ако не повтаряш според тези условности и ритуали, няма да постигнеш резултат или пълния ефект. One of course is you have to get it from guru. И разбира се, най-важното е. And the guru also teach you all the things, you know, how to worship the rishi and the chanda and all this, the meter, etc. И гуру трябва да ти обясни всичко това, как точно да обожаваш, как да повтаряш с конкретната метрика и така нататък. So that's the normal procedure for mantras. И това е стандартната процедура. За мантрите гуру трябва да те научи на това. We see them because Gopu Kumar, his guru just disappeared, didn't teach him anything. <laughs> Still, he got effect. Yeah. So, it's explained in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Yes, most mantras do require some, you know, specific way you chant them, etc. Preliminaries, etc. But Krishna's mantras don't. И в Харибатова се обяснява, да, повечето мантри, за тях е необходимо да се спазват всички тези предварителни процедури и начини, но мантрите за Кришна няма нужда. So then Krishna's mantras are a little special. И тези мантри за Кришна са специални. But as Narada Muni said, you ain't gonna go to Goloka that way. Но както каза и Narada Muni, няма да си нещо до Голока. Трябва да си намасанкирта. So there's a little difference between Krishna mantra and Krishna's name. И има разлика между нама, името на Кришна и тези мантри. So I said, he doesn't explain. But I would expect that it's because even the mantra with Krishna's name, it's got these other syllables there, it is a little formal. Mm-hmm. 
And it's a tradition within, you know, Pancharatra, which yes. is Vaidhi Bhakti. It's basically. a just Pancharatra, Vaidhi Bhakti. So therefore, by doing that, you end up more with a Vaidhi mood. <laughs> and you can go to Dwarka, but you can't get into Vrindavan. <laughs> hmm? So name is completely free of Pancharatra and everything, and it doesn't require Diksha or anything. Името е напълно освободено от всякакви правила, не е необходимо дикша, нито правилата на панчаратрика. So less restriction on it. Така че има малко ограничение. And therefore more powerful. И е по-могъщо. But because it's simply the name, it's also more spontaneous. И понеже просто името е и по-спонтанно. So that is actually like Raganuga. <laughs> that you need that to get to Krishna and Goloka. И с Рагануга може да достигнеш до Кришна и Голока. So that's probably it, but he doesn't explain anywhere like that. Hmm. Maharaj, what is the situation when we have spontaneous attraction to certain angles of bhakti? For example, to listen lectures from, from certain devotees. Yeah. We're not so attracted to others, other angles. So yeah. Какво какво е обяснение за това, че имаме спонтанно привличане към определени методи, практики на бхакти, да слушаме някаква лекция, но не за към други. So that is also considered even within, you know, uh, the scriptures. Това е описано дори в писанията. So we should accept guru or go to devotees, but there should be some <laughs> chemistry between them, if you can say some attraction between them. Трябва да разбира се, общо не спредани да изберем гуру, но, но се казва, че между тях трябва да има някаква химия yeah. или някакво привличане. Yeah, of course, Зим... саджатия. They should be саджатия. че трябва са саджатия. Which, how do we translate that? I mean, same species. <laughs> same family. <laughs> similar type. Удобен тип трябва да Of course, in the broad sense, similar type would mean they're Vaishnavas at least. И разбира се, в по-широк смисъл, че трябва да са всички вишнави, ако искаш Кришна. И последователите на Бог Читания всички са такъв тип, същия тип. So, like that, and of course, the moral particular will be the way they present Krishna, except that we more refine или по-финно, нали, е да се види по начин, в който те представят Кришна или са привързани към. Hmm. And also there should be it should be signa, there should be some affection in that relationship. Hmm. So then that's a good relationship for getting guidance, knowledge, etc. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.